Hello and welcome to Linux Lads. As usual, I'm Shane and I'm joined by Amalith, Connor and Mike. How are you lads? Not too bad. Oh. All right. Awesome. First time we're all back together after a bit of an absence for the last few weeks. Um, mm-hmm. Either one one or two of us were, were away for each episode for the last while. And uh, I know we haven't been keeping up with our usual schedule, so apologies for that. But uh, we're going to get back on track now, we promise. <laughs> Pinky swear. <laughs> When's, uh, how many times have we said that? I uh, was thinking exactly <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> should put a disclaimer that promises are not actual promises. <laughs> <laughs> Never trust those Linux lads. They always <laughs> yes. lie to you. <laughs> so this week, we're going to be talking about tech hoarding. So as you know, nerds, we have a lot of uh, stuff in our drawers that uh, not in our drawers for the people in Europe. Uh, let, let's <laughs> in just our, keep it PC, okay? Uh, in our in our IKEA drawers, in my case, <laughs> we have a lot of stuff hanging around that we bought at one stage or another, and I think Mike is broken. Actually, uh, <laughs> you are you say that there's a lot of hanging, there's a, there's a lot of stuff hanging around in our drawers. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it there and move on. <laughs> so yeah, as nerds, we have a lot of stuff in our drawers. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go there again. That we've bought at one stage or another and thought would be really cool to experiment with and to tinker with. And then it sat in the drawer and l- just gathered dust for about six years. So that's what we're going to talk about. What kind of person are you? Are you the kind of person that has to like replace everything you buy? with the, the newer model and sell the old one or give it away? Or do you just collect it all and have a have a pile of stuff that you don't know what to do with and that you will probably never use? Well, for, for me, um, it's definitely a, a disposable income problem where I'm like, ooh, new shiny, I, I should spend money on that. And then I do spend money on that thing. And then um, it, I end up not using it as much as I initially hoped that I would. It's not so much the that, I mean... There are people who buy like five or six Raspberry Pis thinking they're going to get use out of each Raspberry Pi. So I don't buy it from a nerdy reason. I just buy it for new shiny gadget reason. Uh, as we've mentioned on on previous episodes um, of of this, my my latest purchase has been a, a smartwatch, and thankfully so far that is not an example of of one that um, I've just been gathering dust in the drawer. I actually have it strapped to my wrist currently, so I am actually using that. Um, in the past, I've mentioned what was the the uh, like the Android gaming device. Um, that has been turned on a couple of times, and I thought I would get more use out of that. Um, mainly because I think I, I was I'm using I would use it for more for travel, and I haven't been traveling that much. So I was thinking like on a plane or um on on like a long train ride or something like that. Um, but I just haven't really had the opportunity these days. I don't really use it for commuting. Uh, I tend to listen to podcasts during commuting, so. Um, that is a device that I purchased and don't really get that much use out of. But hey, it's not exactly going to waste. I mean, I, I will break it out occasionally. I um, I did bring it along to the Ubuntu Summit when we went to the Ubuntu Summit. So that uh, that was my first kind of trial of playing it on the plane and such. So that was actually pretty cool. I was able to uh, hook up my Bluetooth headphones up to it and like play away on on the plane when I was going over. Um. But yeah, I feel like uh, FOSS events are a great place for that kind of thing. You, you will have a device sitting in your drawer for months and months untouched. And then as soon as a uh, Og Camp or FOSDEM or Ubuntu Summit or one of them rolls around, you're like, yes, I can bring this and I can show it to people in the in the hallway track. You know, <laughs> it's, yeah. it, fi- it finally has a purpose. What about you, Mike? Uh, I know you you kind of live in a small place, so you can't really afford to like keep a lot of shit around. So, what are your feelings on this? I have a I have a box full of electronics, like components, jump cables, stuff like that, and it's in the hot press, which for non Irish listeners is cupboard <laughs> where you where there is an immersion heater, which immersion heater is what heats the water, 
and it's a hot press because it's hot in there. Anyway, so there's there is a box and a, it's a huge box full of mostly mostly electronics from capacitors to to leads and breadboards and stuff like that. And as you said, I can't take it out. I mean, I can take stuff out and play with it, but then I would have to uh, put it all back and put it uh, back in its place, and there's just no fun. So I don't play with it the same way I have like an unfinished jigsaw puzzle and another two waiting for me to finish them so it's i i I did i'm not a hoarder as such although i do have a few raspberry pies but uh, this is waiting and hopefully like we are we are very close to getting a new place where there will be place for me to leave all this in a you know to, to play with all of these electronics so i hope that sooner rather than later i'll be able to finally utilize these things that i've had to, like for years in some cases yeah, so 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 for now it's all stored, but uh, hopefully soon I'll be able to take it out and actually make something out of it. Amleth, you have, uh, shall we say, less advanced years than the rest of us, so <laughs> I'm assuming you haven't had as much opportunity to collect a bunch of crap you'll never use. I have had some opportunity, and it is starting <laughs> to build up, so I need to start getting rid of things if I don't want it to turn into a horde. I have a, let's see... My first laptop I still have is the Acer C710 Chromebook. I have a ThinkPad X200, my Framework laptop, desktop, some Raspberry Pis, all the cables in the world. I don't think I've ever thrown a cable away unless it doesn't work. But even then, I have kept cables and fixed them so they do work. Uh, uh, like, uh, we're, we're not even counting cables if we're including cables and uh, the, the, all hope is, is lost. So, yeah, we're, cables <laughs> aside, okay, continue. Yeah, aside from cables, I do have some stuff, but not as much as, as many. I, th- I actually think I have a Pi 2B+, plus, Pi 3, and two Pi 4s, possibly, in addition to my Rock Pro 64. That's active in use as my NAS. The rest of the Pies, one of them is running Home Assistant. The rest of them are doing nothing except gathering dust. <laughs> yeah, I can relate to the Pies. At this point, I treat the Pies like collector's items, though. Um, <laughs> I, I, I actually have a first run Pie, like Raspberry Pi 1A minus or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, and it's like the first batch of pies. So I, I, I keep that in the drawer almost like a keepsake. I know it, I'm not going to use it for anything, but it's 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 more just like, I could probably give this to a museum in 20 years time, you know? <laughs> so it's, that's that's how I look at it now. They're, yeah, but Raspberry Pis, I definitely have one from every single generation. And I made sure to do that, whether I use them or not. Like, I, I just thought they were cool at the time. And I was just, I just wanted one. Um, and they, were, they weren't expensive. Not like nowadays where they actually are like the price of an actual computer sometimes. I absolutely intend to use mine. I just don't have a use for them at the moment. When my girlfriend and I move in together later this year, we we both really want to have a, a nice smart house with automations for the lights and all that stuff. And we'll probably put some of those Raspberry Pis into use as, I don't know, temperature sensors or something like that. I am hoping to be soon solving the same problem and I'm kind of on one side, yeah, sure. And on the other side, yeah, but there are like already solutions for this that wouldn't necessitate me tinkering with Home Assistant or anything. And I can just buy a bunch of Apple branded or yeah, probably Apple branded stuff and mm. <laughs> get get a not really smart, but smartish home done that way. But I, you mentioned there your first first laptop. These are kind of exceptions for me because I tended to run the laptops that I had like almost absolutely to the ground until I couldn't possibly carry them and then I got a new one and I used to buy them second hand so I had a few things and I ended up with like a ThinkPad but an IBM branded ThinkPad that had an antenna because it has cell connections and an antenna coming from the top of it <laughs> and a real weird almost square um, aspect ratio and I was running that until it fell apart. And then I was had an old HP that, Connor, you might remember from like the early meetups. That thing was... Oh, the thick boy. Yeah, that, that uh, I called her Chunky. Uh, mm-hmm. And it <laughs> suffered from uh, Ryanair hospitality when I think once, uh, uh, like a, 
assistant and the you know the the plane assistant just shoved my bag into the locker and put someone else's over it and then these kind of things ended up in uh, like the chunky ended up in brinks center they you know like where you go where you get rid of electronic uh, e-waste because that's just that was just she was just beyond repair same with the pine book so i had the original pine book and i thought okay it's white and maybe i could just uh, take it apart and spray the plastic bits uh which i I think i ran out of spray and then i never put it together (laughs) and by the time i wanted to put it together it was broken and then we did i think last year we did like a massive clear up of things that we will definitely never use in the apartment (sighs) and also that pine book uh, ended up in the brink center Uh, you just reminded me of something i remember that original pine book and i also remember that i got myself a pine book pro and that's uh, sitting around somewhere um, you, 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 <laughs> so I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Um, and my problem with the Pine, with Pinebrook Pro is it came with uh, Manjaro, which is the distro that's on it. I'm like, okay, Manjaro, I've used Manjaro before. I know how to up, uh, update Manjaro. I went to update Manjaro using the command line. Uh, the updates then uh, broke the networking. Obviously, it had networking in order to download the updates during the installation process. Then I was like, could not detect any more networks. So I was like, but th- this is the officially supported distro on this device. It's not the. It's not like I installed something else on it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's now effectively uh, it's a brick because um, I don't think there's I can get any networking working on it. Well, you can um, crude in from like the live Arch ISO. And that'll have an, a working networking stack that you can use to fix Manjaro. But it's a bunch of work. And did it want to go through that um, hassle? And I was like, no. Probably easier to just reinstall something else. Uh, you, you you think that. I was even lazier than that. Uh, <laughs> what it did was I uh, replaced it with a ThinkPad. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> Replace the but, laptop. <laughs> and that that is the that is the sleek um, ThinkPad that uh, that I've been using since. So I the reason why I got the the Pinebrook Pro, my idea was it would be it's a device that's small and it's portable. I can shove in a drawer, and then when I need to travel something somewhere, like I can freaking use it for watching offline media, freaking TV shows or something that I've downloaded, and in a hotel room or something like that. And then it's like so your whole purpose of it was this small device and then it failed on that so it's like yeah wouldn't there be you know and not not to distro shame or anything but wouldn't like an arch based distro be the wrong choice for a machine that you just want to leave in a drawer until you need it wouldn't something with a more sensible update cycle be a bit more sensible yeah next time you update it it's just broken anyway <laughs> my my my, count, my counterpoint to that is this is the was the officially supported distro on this device. It's not like I made this choice. My counterpoint to that is that a uh, Pine sixty four for all their good points don't to me at least in my experience they don't support their hardware with software very well or at all. Yeah, they they rely on the community. Yeah, and I have a few examples where the hardware has been left behind quite soon after it was released, and I don't like that about them i you know me i like my uh, hardware software integration quite tight it doesn't have to be perfect but it has to be supported and somebody has to look after it and this is the exact opposite this is taking a bit of hardware making it so can people can work on it but if nobody picks up the work then the hardware is literally unsupported and because it's all arm that can lead to big problems uh, yeah, at the, at the risk of going off on a p- completely separate rant, which I, I won't go into, I have very much mixed feelings over Pine sixty four as a as a as a company. So I'll put it leave it that way. That's me being very diplomatic. <laughs> I do love the embedded type devices I have from Pine sixty four, like the desktop power supply. That's wonderful. I charge a bunch of stuff with it all day, every day. And I use the pine sill soldering iron pretty often as well. Definitely not every day, but pretty often. And it's great. But the Rock Pro 64, I did have some issues with. Um, the I've, I've never actually used the device, but I've heard semi-good reports about the Pine Time, you know, their third watch kind of thing. It works pretty well for the most part, but it's not everything I want out of a watch. I think the, the, the pine the pine saw and the power supply, they obviously they will have some software, they will have firmware on it, mm-hmm. but you need you don't need an actively supported Linux distribution with drivers and all. 
Uh, right. So I uh, that's yeah that's the obvious breaking point there. Yeah, it's it's in a usable state at, currently, and even if um, point CC four went away overnight tomorrow, your point cell will still work. Your 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 charging power supply mm-hmm. would still work. It's a, in the current working state um, and doesn't need any updates. So even if they don't provide any updates, it's still going to work. Those things don't have connectivity, do they? Right. Mm. Imagine, imagine a soldering iron that would connect to the internet. Well, that could be <laughs> well, I I have seen Bluetooth soldering irons where you control the temperature from an app on your phone. <laughs> I, I have a I have a hate hate relationship with Bluetooth. I have <laughs> one one good thing that's Bluetooth, and that's this keyboard that connects every single time. It has got three buttons, so I can connect three different devices at uh, different times, and it's super. Then I have these headphones, which randomly connect to one thing that is on. They, they stay connected, that's good, but sometimes they cut out, and you, you can't choose what's connected. So if I... And, and Apple Gear, with macOS or without macOS, actually, because if you close the lid, it keeps the Bluetooth on, because that's how you find... We can obviously turn it off, but because this is my company's thing, the Bluetooth is how you find your device if somebody somebody nicks it, right? So you leave that on, and I don't mind. It's fine. But if I use the headphones for a company call at 12 o'clock, then I turn the headphones off, then I uh, put them somewhere, finish working hours later, and then just close the lid on the MacBook because I don't want to turn it off, and then want to listen on something from my phone on the headphones, I turn the headphones on, they connect to the MacBook, and the only thing I can do is to open the MacTop, MacBook, log in, disconnect the Bluetooth there, and connect on my phone. It's, it's just, I know cheap headphones and it's my fault, but stupid. <laughs> uh, uh, my my Sony headphones do something very similar. Is you have to manually uh, it will constantly connect to the same device, which is I pretty much always use it with my phone, so that's perfectly fine. But if I have to do it with something else, I have to first turn up, disconnect it from my phone because it would auto connect it to my phone all the time. Um, I've heard so minus the the Sony big, long, complicated names. Everyone calls them the Mark something. So mine's there are the Mark 3. I've heard of the Mark 4. You mean the WH-1000 XM3, XM4, XM5s? Those. And so on. Okay. Impressive. <laughs> so mine are the, Mar- mine are the Mark 3, and, and I've heard in the Mark 4 you can do multiple device pairings. So that's one of yes. the things that they did. I had the 3 for a long time and absolutely loved them. And then I got the 5s and then broke one of the like whatever this is called, the head part. Oh. <laughs> the, the he, like he's pointing at the headband that is connecting the ear cup to the top of his head. Yes. So in the fours, I think was the peak design because they had they had all the best features, but they were still foldable. And then the fives, they they're like, I know, we're going to stop making them foldable. Why? I do not know. I hated that. So in the fours is debatably the best ones all of the, all of them, but it's just marginally better than the threes, and my threes are still working. So I'm like, I cannot justify getting rid of the threes in order to get the fours. <laughs> Hold on for a second. The word I was looking for, so Jake can can put it in and remove the the, the awkwardness. Uh, they broke right at the swivel where the ear cup would swivel attached to the headband. If that makes any sense. Okay. Now continue. <laughs> That's that's the thing. So you you have something, and then something better comes out. I usually am pretty good at not caving to that, except one massive expensive thing. When I I have a working laptop uh, with an x86 laptop, but then when the M1 MacBooks came out, I held I think year and a half, and then I just got one anyway, even though because there were you know I just wanted that thing. Email. This 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 podcast is when I'm coming out ex- as a as a massive Apple fanboy, isn't it? I was talking about HomeKit. I was talking <laughs> you, about my uh, this books. podcast. Oh, the old <laughs> specific podcast. Okay, episode yes. is when you're <laughs> okay. The, the, there Do, are, just there so are, clear. Okay, there are some episodes where I don't come out as such, but those are the ones that I haven't been on. So uh, anyway, so so other than that, I'm pretty good. I am still. I'm. You know, it's been. What, like 10 years since smart watches are a pretty good proposition? I still haven't got one. So yeah, so I, I don't I don't usually have to buy the new thing. Alisa's looking at me like incredulously, like what are you talking about? <laughs> no, that's actually not true. So I don't have to I don't have to buy the new thing. I 
uh, only once ran out out of my home on my day off and to, and went around shops because something out, new was out and that was like 2014 when the Raspberry Pi uh, the the tiny one was on the cover of a of the Raspberry Pi magazine and I it was my day off and I I saw it on Twitter or something and I'm like I have to get this because it was you know it was like I don't know I was in England back then it was like 15 pounds or something or 10 pounds so. I, I actually ran around a few shops and I found one that still had the magazine and I got that. So I, that's that's and I've never used it since. I'm just going to answer this question very definitively for myself <laughs> as to whether or not I'm a tech hoarder. So I'm just going to describe to you maybe like 10 items that I see right in front of me right now. And while you guys were talking, I was having a little look through my drawers because this is where I put everything. Stop it, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so right in front of me i have a game boy advance sp i have a nintendo ds Lite. i have uh, a raspberry pi something two i think and that's only one of them um i have a, a broken broken logitech mx master mouse i have some old dungeons and dragons dice from many many years ago <laughs> i have a zoom <laughs> we- zoom recorder <laughs> Three of we us have the <laughs> MX Master Mouse. Mine's we broken though. Opera. Mine's broken, and I still have it in the drawer. It's completely we all broken. Up our MX Masters. I lost my temper in work one day, and I smacked it on the desk, and it hasn't worked since. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> it's a it's a great mouse, and I'm really yeah. sad that it's broken because. And look how dirty it is. Um, and then let, let's see, let's see. I can just look in a drawer and find things to prove. I have a Raspberry Pi touchscreen thing that I've never ever used. I have, I have a, an absolute, a box full of Arduino components that I've never used, uh, a camera tripod, a roll of string for some reason. Um, oh, this is a great one. A router from <laughs> an internet provider that I haven't been with for about three years. Is that, uh, uh, is that uh, a Fritz box? Yes, it is. Well spotted. I have a Fritz box just that I can't point you to it, but basically we have a function in Fritz box from DigiWeb, which is uh, <laughs> which is the ISP, and that's a great router. It actually is router, not bad. Like not I, the thing, the problem is though, I lost the the power adapter for it, like the the plug. Ah, so okay. um, I want to. I I don't like. I could probably get like a aftermarket one that with the same voltage and stuff but like is it just a standard bar- barrel connector i'm sure you can get something no maybe it is i don't know oh it yeah, is probably, it's just you just need to yeah. get the proper one and the proper voltage and ampage i'm just furiously pulling things out of the drawers right now that's all i'm doing <laughs> um but like yeah and lots and lots and lots of cables maybe i should use this uh, this d20 to decide what i should do with all this stuff <laughs> so yeah oh and a ball of uh modeling clay for some reason. I always break up this one, which is the my my first um coupon two C D, which is six oh six LTS. Well you see, that's a little bit different. That's um that's a keepsake, you know, that's a bit of a little bit of history. Uh that that's how I see my Raspberry Pis and all the like single board computers and stuff like that. They're just kind of interesting. But like there is yeah. quite a lot of things in in my desk that are completely and, and utterly useless that I should probably just get rid of. I brought that along to the Ubuntu so much and Mark Shuttleworth was there and people said, oh, you should get Mark Shuttleworth to sign it. And I was like, no, that, that would kind of be a bit cringe, so I don't think I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> and was he even CEO then? Uh, the Ubuntu so much, yes. No, but oh, like well, when that particular release came out. Oh, yes. Maybe he yeah, was. He, sure, he, yeah. was with the, yeah, he, he founded the company. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think I think he's only br- done a brief period when he was not been the CEO, but he had, he had another similarly uh, highfalutin title other than CEO and somebody else was the CEO uh, in- instead for like four or five years now he's back to being the CEO as as Avalet fur- furiously googles in the background <laughs> <laughs> so just to summarize this everybody has got shit in their drawers that f- that that we thought was interested and we will definitely get to work with working with or playing with at some point and never have uh, t- 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 Title idea, shit in our drawers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think we would get this past the uh, YouTube uh, YouTube filters. Oh, yeah. Don't. Stuff hey, in our drawers. S- stuff it down your drawers. 
I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> nice. It, there's no there's no good way of saying it. Right. The, 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 the Nintendo stuff, is that functional? Yes, they actually do work. Um, I actually did play uh, Pokemon on this quite recently. Um, oh, oh is, is, is that the backlit SP? Yeah, it's really cool. Oh, I actually really like it. Oh, you lucky bastard. Uh, just for the listener with the black and white television sets, he's, he's showing something that's it's like a clamshell, silver wheel, almost square when it's when it's closed. It has got that, what, like two-inch display and some funny buttons. Yeah. Let's give you the sound effect just for atmosphere. Oh, I, I love the sound. <laughs> I had a Game Boy Advance for a long time. I don't know where it is now. I actually Jake, have games. Please, here, please do yeah. something with that sound effect if you're allowed to by the, the angry people over in the uh, Japanese Oh, God, company. we're going to get <laughs> sued for this, aren't we? I have uh, Pokemon <laughs> Leaf Green. It's like the remake of the original Pokemon game. Um, there's actually a tiny battery in here to uh, keep keep the chip power that stores your save game. And I actually went to a retro game store and they replaced it for me for only like a few quid. So well, that's uh, nice. That was, that's interesting. I have Tetris and I have... Uh, Rampage World Tour. Um, there's probably others hanging around here. I'm, I'm guessing that game company was not CEX because they would charge you like 500 billion euro in order to do the same thing. <laughs> no, it was the Rage in Dublin. Or a uh, or a G E yeah, Retro Arcade one. Retro and Arcade Games Emporium. I think that's what it stands for. Uh, and I also have Advance Wars, which is a really fun game. Did you ever play Golden Sun? No, actually, it's a great one. Um, and the, yeah, like the, this is the thing with me though. Like I have a lot of crap that's left over for the last few years, but I maintain it all very well. Like I have this Nintendo DS Lite and the hinge is usually the first thing to go on these and it still works perfectly. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> in Ferrari Red as well. And it, yeah, what's in, in, in the Nintendo DS Lite, I have a, I have a, um, a flash card that you can put a, a mini, or, or not mini, a micro SD card into um, with ROMs. Uh, of course, mm-hmm. I own the games as well, you know? Of course. <laughs> but yeah, th- those are just nice. Like, I like, you know, computing, technology, history, that kind of stuff. I like to have old retro stuff around the house. So on that note, I think we're going to wrap up. Um, before we go, we have a few shout outs. You can contact us on show at linuxlads.com. That's the best place to get in touch with us. For all our other social links, um, you can go to linuxlads.com forward slash contact. Just to remind everyone, we do have a Ko-Fi coffee. Uh, it's like essentially like Patreon. Um, we do have that as well. We have that linked on our website. We get 100% of any donations through coffee. That's a good point. We, uh, yeah, n- none of the none of your money will go to a third party. It all goes directly to us, which is um, which is more favorable to some people. Uh, we're most active kind of individually on Mastodon on our own separate profiles, and uh, the Telegram group is probably the most active thing we have going at the moment. So uh, that's the best place to join as well. Just to shout out again, uh, just to build up some buzz for this, uh, Og Camp is happening again this year. For those that don't know. I forgot to, I'll give you the very brief version of this story, but I won a laptop at OGCamp several years ago. I won the top prize of the uh, Entroware Apollo laptop, and everyone was very, very jealous. So that's now broken, by the way. So that's part of the tech waste we were talking about. (laughs) (laughs) Still have it up in the attic. Uh, So yeah, OGCamp is happening uh, October 12th and 13th, 2024 in Manchester in the UK. So uh, we will be there, absolutely, with bells on. And uh, I would encourage everyone to check it out. No, 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 no. I, I am pretty much most definitely not going. I, I'm a 50-50. And I definitely won't be there. Uh, okay, yeah, maybe I'll say all that again then. <laughs> so uh, Yeah, don't trust the lying Linux lads. <laughs> I mean, I'm going, like, my girlfriend's yeah. coming with me and everything, because she's never been to Manchester. Uh, so, a cheaper hotel room. Thank you very much. Um, I wish I could go, but it's an expensive so I, 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 As I said, it's a 50-50 for me. So, we will see. But we would definitely encourage you to go, because it's, pers- personally speaking, it's my favorite uh, FOSS event on, on the planet. So, I think that wraps it up for this week. 
Uh, we will see you again in uh, tilde two weeks. <laughs> so goodbye. Bye. 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 We are at the 41 minute mark. Do we want to wrap it up or keep going? Does anyone else have anything to contribute? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I can look in my drawers a bit more if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's never not going to be funny. Uh...